What I do is called computational sensing, which basically means I make algorithms which can take in raw, raw data and from there form some form of images that are meaningful to humans or to, uh, to robots or um, uh, you know, uh, computers. One of the challenges in, for many contexts, including the context of making an autonomous car, is uh, being able to accurately sense uh, the surrounding around that autonomous vehicle. It could be also a robot. Now, the very first step to make that sensing even possible or robust is to actually equip this vehicle with different sensors. Now, having those different sensors can give you different advantages, some pluses, minuses, but what you can also do is use the fact that all these sensors are looking at the same scene and try to combine the information across those sensors to get better output, to get higher quality output. And this is basically the sensor fusion is about. And our brains naturally do it generally for humans. It's a very natural process. We hear, we see, we smell, we have all the five senses, and then our brain can process all the data and make for us a meaningful model of the environment. Here I show a little example which can show the potential of sensor fusion. So what we see here is two types of sensors. There's a camera sensor, which you can see is a high resolution, so you can see very well everything in that image. But it does not give you information about depth or distance to the object around it. Now, if you put two cameras together, you can get what's called stereo vision and then get depth information. And that would be what you see on the screen below, where yellow means we're close and blue means we're far away. Now, there is one problem on using just camera or relying just on camera. And the problem will be that cameras don't work at dark. Cameras have certain limitations. They're, they're passive sensors. Now, there are other types of sensors that we can potentially put on an autonomous vehicle. For example, here you see a, a laser sensor, which basically gives you points by measuring those points around the car and tells you distance to one point at a time. And then he does it for several points. Now, there is advantage to a laser sensor. It works at the dark. You know, it gives you very high precision on those points. But there is also a problem that this is very low resolution measurements it can provide. Now, in sensor fusion, what we try to do, and that's basically the image below, is try to combine the information, the raw data coming from camera and data coming from a laser sensor to actually improve the quality of the information coming from a laser sensor, in particular to give it a higher resolution and capture the depth to you know surrounding uh, scene. It can contain also audio component. Actually, it's not only video com uh, visual component because we are actually also process microwave range images, meaning a radar, which is something a human eye cannot see, but the machine can see by processing it, we can actually turn into a data which tells the autonomous vehicle the, the information about the surrounding. So I see this technology actually getting implemented very widely. So as, as the cost of sensors will, will go down, we will be able to afford more sensor per devices that we have. Once we have several sensors together on a one device which has a computational power, then we can imagine making technology like that that will make better of all the sensors, for example, to improve. You could imagine your phone having two types of sensors, or three types of sensors, and having algorithms dedicated, for example, to extract something which you would like to use in your own life.